Hey, Trailblazers. Happy New Year and happy holidays to anyone that's watching. Hoyaverse decided to drop a huge content bomb on us at the end of this year with patch 1.6. So in 1.6, we have new MLC levels. So we have MLC 11 and MLC 12, and we have the new character Runmei. For this video, it's going to be a mix between a commentary about Runmei and also a commentary about the new floors 11 and 12 in MLC. So what you're seeing here is floor 11, side 1 in MLC 11. And I'm using Runmei in a hyper carry comp. I'm using her in a Jinyuan hyper carry comp. A lot of the hype around Runmei has been around dual DPS comps. But the thing you have to realize is that Runmei just adds a lot of damage. So you can put her with pretty much any carry in any combination. I do have an example of a dual DPS comp coming up in MLC 12. But for MLC 11, I decided to put her with Jinyuan. And that's because MLC 11 is really good for lightning carries. So if you have Jinyuan, I recommend using him for floor 11 side 1. The main thing you want to watch out for on this floor is the new Spectral Envoy enemy. That's a robot girl with the fan. Her annoying thing is that she can CC your entire team, so that could screw up your Lightning Lord for Jinyuan, or that can also stun your healer at a crucial time. And I've definitely had to restart one or two times because my Luotro got stunned and then someone else died after that. So focus her down first because she's the one that can actually screw up your run. And this is the main thing I noticed about Floor 11 and Floor 12, is that it's very unforgiving. If there's anything that happens to your team, a healer gets targeted and CC'd, or somebody weak just gets focused down for whatever reason, like a Teen Yoon just taking all the aggro, in MLC 10 and below, a lot of times you can still live with it, right? Your Teen Yoon is tanky enough so that she doesn't die, or your team is just tanky for overall if your healer isn't available. But that's not really the case anymore in MLC 11 and MLC 12 because the damage is so high. So if there's a string of bad luck, your team is actually in danger, and you might just have to restart a few times. Another difference in floors 11 and 12 is that the enemies are higher level, and consequently they have more health. This makes the cycle requirements a little bit harder to achieve. I looked at some HP numbers, and the bosses are around 200,000 more HP in MLC 12 compared to MLC 10. As a result, that adds about one to maybe even three cycles more to what you typically do in MLC 10. If you have to double heal these fights, then that makes the cycle requirements even harder to achieve. For my account, which I personally think is pretty strong, it took me six cycles to clear MLC 11 and then seven cycles to clear MLC 12. And you can see how strong Rami is because she lets me two cycle side one with my Jinwon who's only running the free to play breakfast light cone. Now you get to see Ramei in a dual DPS team comp. I'm running her with Blade and Su Sheng in MC12 side 1. I want to quickly highlight how good Ramei's technique is. It's very easy to stack with other techniques, and it lets you enter the battle with Ramei auto casting her skill. What this means is that she doesn't need a skill point on the first turn, and immediately begins by using a basic attack. So you can almost think of the technique as giving you an extra skill point. You can see how that comes in play in this fight actually, because I use my Luocha to do a random useless heal so that I can use Luocha's ult to dispel the buff from the Sanctus Medicus guy. I can do that because I have so many skill points to use. Also in this fight, you get to see how absurdly quick Su Shane breaks physical weak enemies. She does this against the horse in wave 1 and then she does this against Kafka in wave 2. The reason she's able to break so quickly is because of Ramei's skill, which gives a 50% increase in break efficiency. Another underappreciated aspect of Ramei is that her buffs for the team are tied to herself rather than the carries. So in the case of Su Sheng, she can use her skill alt skill combo as many times as she wants without having to worry that the buffs are going to expire. At the same time, because the buffs are tied to Ramei, you have to actually be a little bit careful about timing. There was actually a misplay earlier in this video where I used Ramei's ult immediately instead when I should have waited until Ramei's turn to activate her ult. Another thing that I learned about Ramei is that the speed buff from her talent is only okay, but not great. It's only a 10% speed buff, which is good enough to boost my blade to reach the 134 speed threshold. But I'm still required to use speed boots on blade rather than HP boots. 
And similarly, in the last fight on floor 11, I had to use speed boots on Jinyuan instead of attack boots, otherwise he would be too slow at stacking his Lightning Lord. This team comp of pairing Rumei with both Blade and Su Sheng is so fun. It's legit one of my favorite team comps that I found to use with Rumei. Blade is supported by every part of her kit. Every other Harmony character has some kind of attack buff somewhere. And with Su Sheng, besides helping her break much faster, she extends the time in which the enemies are weakness broken, which lets Su Sheng do a lot more damage and also take a lot of extra turns from her speed buffs. This run ended up being two cycles as well. So you can see that Run Mei is very strong both in hyper carry comps and also in dual carry comps. If you're curious as to what I did for side 2 on floors 11 and 12, I just used the trio of Bronya, Pela, and Jingliu for both. That trio is just so strong and the enemies are ice weak, so there's really no reason to not use it. I'm still free to play. I got my Bronya a few weeks ago through the 300 selector on the regular banner. You can check out my builds at the end of this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Paradise, savor it for me.